This week on Red Dead Radio, we're going to talk about Deadwood. Finally! Yay! And Naomi Kyle's here! That's right. Being nice is overrated. Hi, friends. Welcome to Red Dead Radio, the Red Dead Redemption podcast. I'm your host, Jared Petty. And as always, we're going straight to the wild, wild guest. We're going straight to the wild, wild guest. We're going straight to the wild, wild guest. Yeah! Hi, who are you? I'm Naomi. You are Naomi. Naomi Kyle, the fabulous Naomi Kyle. I'm fabulous. You are fabulous. Thank you. My old friend, uh, who I've not seen in a long time, professional host, producer, podcast creator. Now past podcast creator, yeah. <laughs> entrepreneur, actor, at all, etc. And one of the best singers I know. Thank you. You have for lots of that. talents, indeed. It's I have wanted to sit down with you for a long time. I'm here in Los Angeles now, yep. uh, during uh, during E3, mm-hmm. and I just was like, oh, thank you, Nam. And Nomi, you just were kind enough to invite me onto your new show. Tell us about that, please. Yeah, so it's a new podcast called Everybody Games, and the title says it all. But uh, we like to bring on people who don't know games that much, people who do know games a lot, um, people who've played mobile games or console games, who's hardcore into the PC games. Anything along those lines, we want to have you on our show. Um, but yeah, we interview guests and we talk about uh, kind of their life as a gamer, whether it's news-based, like what kind of we did with you because it was E3. Yep. Um, but we also touch on kind of their background and what they're up to, and it's just a really fun, casual podcast. Now, I like a good, like, laid-back podcast. Where do people, like, if they want to listen to it, where do you go? Uh, it's on iTunes right now. We're getting it for Spotify soon and Google Play, but it's not there yet, so just stay tuned. And you can also watch it. Mm-hmm. You can also also watch it um, on YouTube at, on, on my YouTube channel. And Naomi is Kyle. YouTube Naomi Kyle? Is yep. that just it? Okay, excellent. You have a lot. You do you do uh, vlogs on there. You do this. Yes. What else do you have find on there? Um, so I've been working. So everybody games kind of the main thing, but I do yeah my my vlogs which are kind of numbered, and then I have uh, just day in the life stuff. I call it Naomi's adventures. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing something kooky or I like to sh- like I showed off my apartment recently, so I kind of go based off what people say, and then I'll, I'll hopefully be able to make a piece of content out of it and that's basically it i have always appreciated you when i very first came to ign you were one of the oh, yeah. very first people to just reach out and the, uh, you were the first folks to have us in your home you're just like come oh, over yeah. you had angie and i <laughs> over it's just like yeah and you you are this just font of light and brightness and warmth and i like you so much i'm glad you're thank here thank you you're Jared. so nice no i like I, you too jared oh thank you look at us mutually admiring one <laughs> another here but yeah this is red dead radio the red dead redemption podcast i want to thank our patreon producers austin riley william holbert and jonathan all of whom make this show possible and all of you who help us out on reddeadradio.com thank you for subscribing and all the rest but now ladies and gentlemen it is time for shootout red dead redemption news Hi, friends. We'll be right back with Naomi to talk about Deadwood and some other stuff. But first, shoot out the news. Pony Express talking about the mail and a little more catch up with you. Let's see what's going on in Red Dead in the news right now. Well, this from GameSpot headline, Red Dead Redemption 2 not expected to sell as well as GTA 5, comma, of course. That's their headline, not mine. Let's see what they have to say. Grand Theft Auto 5 developer Rockstar Games' next project, Red Dead Redemption 2, is expected to be one of the biggest and best-selling games of 2018. But it's not going to sell as well as Rockstar's last game, GTA V, according to Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick. Speaking to GI.biz, Zelnick said it would be unrealistic to think Red Dead Redemption 2, or any other game, would sell as well as GTA V. That game has shipped an astonishing 95 million units to become one of the most successful entertainment products of any kind in human history. Red Dead Redemption 2 will still do, quote, incredibly well, Zelnick said, even if it doesn't match GTA 5's, GTA 5's sales mark. Quote, It's hard to expect anything to perform as well as the most profitable entertainment product of all time, end quote, Zelnick said. Continuing the quote, I don't think that's a realistic expectation. Our hope and also belief is that Red Dead Redemption 2 will be an extraordinary creative product that will do incredibly well. Beyond that, I can't say. I don't think anyone can say. We have to release it and see what consumers think. Red Dead Redemption 1, which launched in 2010, was a massive success. It sold 13 million copies as of 2013, and that figure has no doubt risen higher since. Take-Two does not release sales projections, but one analyst believes Red Dead Redemption 2 will sell at least 15 million units. In April this year, one analyst said Rockstar may never have a bigger hit than Grand Theft Auto V when it comes to sales. Michael Jackson had a lot of albums, but he only had one thriller, 
analyst Doug Kraut said. So that's uh, the news. Uh, we have these these comments from the CEO of Take Two himself talking about projections and expectations around this game. Now, there's going to be all kinds of opinions about this, and I don't have anybody to bounce this one off of. So rather than ramble, I'm just going to give you a quick take. I think that 15 million projections projection is low. I'm not sure if it's low for the first year, but I do think it's low for lifetime. I think we will see Red Dead Redemption 2 on this generation of consoles. I think we'll most likely honestly see it on PC where it can scale up and, and have some other opportunities. And I think there's a real chance even of a next gen version, depending on when the next gen consoles actually pop. I think we're going to see Red Dead Redemption 2 all kinds of places. And I think it's going to have a long and extremely successful uh, period of sales. I think 15 million really is low. Um, what am I basing that off of? Time in the industry, looking at the sales of other products, thinking about the scale of the timetable around this game, looking at its previous sales, looking at the amount of hype around it, looking at just the search traffic and the expectations, thinking about how online gaming has shifted since Red Dead 1 shipped at 12 million units originally and probably more since. And now with a landscape where online gaming is an entirely different thing and this game being built around an online component almost certainly, I can just expect so much more player interaction and integration. I also fully expect Rockstar to integrate GTA 5 and um, Red Dead Online in some interesting ways. I think they'll probably share a common cur uh, currency. I think there'll be some other ways that those probably integrate that'll help drive one uh, group of players into the other and vice versa to support one another. This game's going to do ridiculously well. Uh, now, again, I'm not a magical prognosticator. I can't see into the future, but I have never seen a situation where I have more reason to expect that a video game will be massively successful. And while that 95 million game figure is remarkable in practically every sense of the word, I do think this game has the potential to be one of the best-selling AAA video games of all time. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see if it turns out that way. But that's what I expect. Again, not just Hype Machine. I'm basing that on what I think is going to happen, not just what I want to happen. Of course, I want a good game to do well, and I think there's very good reason to believe this is going to be a very good game. But uh, I also think that the marketplace conditions and the fact that Rockstar makes such good stuff consistently is going to play in, in uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2's favor. So those are my quick thoughts on that. Now, moving over to Pony Express, we're going to hop into the mailbag here, but I've actually got quite a bit of mail. As a matter of fact, I asked y'all for uh, your feedback on what you want to see and Red Dead Redemption, and that was almost going to be the topic of this this episode. But there's so much that I think it deserves its own full-length episode all by itself. So next week, that's what we're going to do. What you want from Red Dead Redemption, your responses. Think I'm going to get together with John. He and I are going to talk over those, look through those ideas, throw our feedback into the mix. I hope you enjoy hearing your stuff read. There's just so much. But I did want to hit uh, a little bit here in the Pony Express bag right now. By the way, Next week will also mark the uh, the introduction of our true, honest to goodness, real physical mailbag. That's right. Thanks to one of the kind of funny best friends, a kind of funny prom. Uh, shout out to kind of funny best friends for being the absolute best. I now have a real honest to goodness physical mailbag to pull the mail out of. And we're going to debut that on the what you want from Red Dead Redemption episode next week. So stay tuned for that. But today uh, I've got an email from Jacob Rubel. Uh, and he writes into us to say, hello, my main man, JP, and the Wild Wild Guest. Sorry to disappoint you there, Jacob. The Wild Wild Guest is a virtual Wild Wild Guest recorded a few weeks ago in L.A. who will be joining us again in just a second. Naomi Kyle is coming back. First of all, thank you for the great content over the years. I'm excited about this new adventure from you, for you and your plan on following you on it. Thank you for saying that. That means a lot to me. Second of all, we've heard a lot about Gun, Red Dead Revolver, and other more current Western games. But what is your favorite retro Western game? Mine is a cheat, because it's not all Western. But I have great memories of playing Daydreaming Davy with my mom. The first level is a Western, so it always stands out to me as such. Now, this is notable to me, Jared, for a couple of reasons. Okay, first... You are the first human being I've ever encountered with fond memories of Daydreaming Davey. And that makes me happy. Uh, Dave Dreaming Davey, not necessarily the best design video game in the world. Thematically, very interesting. Didn't all come together really well. But the fact that you have good memories of it is awesome. I think all of us have a game that 
people may recognize as objectively not the best that we still identify closely with because of memories, because it's what we had and what we played, because we saw something in it and others didn't. So I really think that's rad that you like this game. And I'm glad that the memory is tied to something you played together with a family member. So he says, keep up the good work. And if you can't get this question on the show, I'll take it in email. No, we're absolutely getting on the show. Such an inspiration to me, man. Oh, okay. Now that's just, I should have read farther. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I'm a preacher who wants to work in video games journalism, and I have a small podcast. I do. Thanks again. And that's once again, Jacob Rubel. Thank you, Jacob. So my answer on favorite Western uh, game, uh, that's a retro game. I've thought about this a lot. Um, I played a lot of Sunset Riders arcade back in the day, but going back to that now is much harder. Sunset Riders, I was not aware when I was younger of just how kind of problematic that game is uh, and uh, in ways that we'll discuss in a more uh, contextual and thoughtful uh, setting sometime on this very show. And I'm going to cheat a little too, because there are a lot of interesting uh, Western games. However, my favorite is actually a pseudo spiritual sequel slash remake of a very, very old video game. The old game is called Outlaw, and it's one of the earliest Atari 2600 games. Outlaw is simple. It's two cowboys shooting at each other with a wagon between them. The 2600 was very good at generating two moving sprites and a couple of bullets and not much else, and Outlaw was built around that. Many, many years later, uh, Emmanuel Pollock uh, created Gunfight. Gunfight is a custom homebrew Atari 2600 game, and it is one of my favorite Atari homebrews. One, because it's a very well-designed and very well-done Atari game. It still has a simple theme. But two, it is like a marvelous recreation of a game that should have been fun but never really was. Outlaw, for all its interesting ideas, is not a lot of fun to play. Gunfight takes everything that was wrong with Outlaw and fixes it, adds to it, smooths all the rough edges, and takes a neat idea that wasn't fun and turns it into a neat idea that's a lot of fun. It's a great two-player game. Very simple. Uh, but So this is a contemporary game with a retro-style design, but informed by modern design philosophy. And I love games that do that. So I'd say this is probably my favorite. We'll be playing this uh, later on for On the Trail. Uh, not today, but soon. As a matter of fact, we're going to play several Western-themed games in the coming months. I'll have more details for that soon. And speaking of On the Trail, let's talk about that. I said at the beginning of the show, we'd be playing through Red Dead Redemption together. And then I haven't done that with you in a couple of weeks. That is simply a matter of figuring out the best way to get this done and pacing it along toward the release of the other game. And frankly, getting my stuff together and making sure it's done right. So I appreciate your patience with the fact that the way it's not gone forever. We're actually going to do more discussion through the game slash some let's play-ish type stuff around that. Hopefully by next week, I've got more to tell you about definite plans. But expect to see Western games like Gun, like Gunfight, like Wild Guns Reloaded, like a bunch of other things that are out there. Maybe Gunsmoke. Oh, game Gun is in the name of all these. It's very... Wow, why is the word gun in all those games? We may even talk about Sunset Riders. Uh, we probably should, as a matter of fact, because it's one of the most prominent Western games uh, ever made. And we'll run down those lists uh, soon and on the trail, as well as get back to Red Dead and play along together. Again, watch for that next week. Now, I really appreciate the fact that you're watching and listening to this podcast right now, but having me just stare into a camera and talk and talk about who wants that? Uh, I think you'd rather move on and uh, get a little bit of that entertainment context with Naomi Kyle. I had a chance to sit down with her during E3 a few weeks ago. There was no Red Dead news during E3 at all. So we focused mostly on talking about her uh, favorite Western TV program, Deadwood, and some of the things she liked about it. I know a lot of you are Deadwood fans. And we kind of do a quick discussion on that, followed by, a talk about fighting ducks the size of horses. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the news today. Next week, a Red Dead heavy dive uh, with what you want from Red Dead Redemption. And hey, you can always write into mail at reddeadradio.com. It's mail and com, and tell me what you think uh, about Red Dead Redemption sales. Maybe we could start a, a, a poll or something with that. I'd like, kind of like to know what you think is going to happen. Also, uh, just sticking it in here, uh, right in the middle of the episode, Hey, if you uh, want to support the work of the show and the other stuff I do at Hot Blip and a Jump, etc., it's uh, reddeadradio.com or hotblipjump.com takes you to my Patreon. 
I really do need your help uh, to make the shows I make and to move forward and improve them to the place I want them to be. So uh, if you've got a few bucks laying around, the exclusives are pretty good. You get several bonus audio episodes a month with all kinds of different content on them. And uh, you also get to help us keep making this. The new episode of Hop, Flip, and a Jump is out now, by the way. I don't know if you watch that or not, but there's short six to ten minute videos uh, uh, about... What's going on in gaming? And not talk to the camera style, but something very different. I, I think the best way to explain Hot Blimp and a Jump is for you to just go and look at it. Um, I don't think it's quite like anything else you've seen in gaming and in a very good way. So that's uh, at the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hot Blimp and a Jump. Or if you're at reddeadradio.com on the Patreon, it's always there on the post feed. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, allowing me the plug and uh, coming along for the news, the mailbag, etc. A lot more mail to get through next week. See you then. Let's go talk to Naomi. Thanks and bye. And we're back. Naomi, uh, I'm especially happy to have you on here because there have been a lot of requests. Ever since we first started the show, we talk a lot about the influence of cinema, art, television, and film mm -hmm. uh, in the Western mythos and how that affects video games and vice right, versa. Right, right. So... Since week one, people are like, we need to hear about Deadwood. And at last, I have a Deadwood fan oh, here. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know it was such a high demand thing, but I'm glad because it is probably one of the best Western TV shows you'll ever see. Yeah, it is spectacular. Yeah, it's um, great. Uh, so Deadwood, and I'm a fan. You're a fan. <laughs> when, when did you first start watching? Um, I don't think it was exact. It definitely wasn't when it came out. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have HBO much in like... Uh, at all up until I was 22 maybe okay so um, I started watching maybe like 2013 maybe 2012 around that time okay yeah what, what brought you into it um my boyfriend at the time was really into it and um, I was needing something to watch I don't know often I consume a lot of content and yeah. I watch a lot of TV shows uh, and I love HBO you know like everything that they're making um, and have made in the past they have such a really good um, repertoire of, of really amazing shows. You yeah. know, they kind of kickstarted what makes Netflix really popular right now. Exactly. And you know, Deadwood, it was a subscription based sh uh, way to watch content. Yeah, these kind of limited run series that yep. uh, that focus on production quality and no restrictive. And they can't. They can swear all they want. They can show nudity all they want. There's no restrictions. Uh -huh. So they really were able to go down into like some of the, you know. It's stuff that TV hasn't hadn't explored yet uh, that much. Yeah, and Deadwood was one of the earliest examples of that. I mean, yes. we, we, you know, we all think about Game of Thrones now, or we go back and think about shows like Sopranos. But Deadwood, but Deadwood was started early. That. Yeah, yeah. And I think with um, Deadwood, it was like their first foray into something a bit more. You know, it's a period, it's a time in in our history, and while well, Americans' history, I don't know if yeah, it's really Canadian. But <laughs> uh, were there um, were there Canadian gunfighters? Pretty sure there were. I just don't. I don't know much about the history of that. They're if very there polite. Were. Yeah, and I don't think it's the w typical Western, you know, like in the desert. Yeah. The way we know westerns to be nowadays. No, I imagine be the mountains and the plains out in West Canada. It'd be um, a lot colder. Yeah, yeah, and people were dressed a lot more in. Uh, furs and things like that well i, I know <laughs> that at least uh, you know around the alaskan gold rush there was kind of some wild west style culture in america i know very little about the canadian west except i, I know don't, some I don't i've never heard canadian but... west so i feel like it doesn't even it's okay. not a thing yeah. you know there was the trading companies and that whole thing that happened at a while and canada's a really young country yeah so um but we kind of diverted away from uh deadwood which you know it, it was kind of hbo's they really nailed down the um you know going into something a bit more fantasy based and and i think it kickstarted the popularity of things like game of thrones and they were they perfected that formula now so you mentioned it was it was the best western tv show you'd watch as what now i've haven't seen that many westerns well, if that's, that's what you're gonna ask but no i mean there are a lot of western tv shows through history but mm -hmm. i wondered like you know there hadn't been westerns on tv a lot you know briscoe county jr had popped up and i, right. I, you know, I think like dr quinn medicine woman oh, was dr on. quinn i used to watch that with my parents so you liked westerns I mean, I mean i don't know if it was a thing that i was like i'm really into westerns that's all i'm gonna watch but uh there was just some really great western shows that just happened to be westerns okay and my mom was definitely into dr quinn but deadwood about as far from dr quinn as you yes. can get well that's the thing i think what the deadwood did and you know westerns have always had kind of a dark grittiness to it mm -hmm. but uh they definitely took it to a whole other level yeah i, I think with the you know hbo being able to do what they can do well when you, you talk about that grittiness yes. uh, what was the appeal of that for you um it, it was very sometimes hard to watch um i mean they touch on 
topics that are very hard for any audience to watch. Things like rape, mm -hmm. things like uh, mistreatment, mistreatment of women. And a lot of the characters are terrible people. Well, they really are. They're yeah, really is, terrible people. Yeah. Um, and the swearing, uh, they say that these really, the, the swear words that are in the show, I mean, you could you could count them, but there are plenty. Uh, like they say, I don't even know if I can say it on you your can. show. You okay, can. they say cocksucker a lot. Mm -hmm. And these really terrible words that should not be used right now, and I don't think are, thankfully. Um, but which were common profanity in the very period. Very common in the period. Yeah. At least that's what I think HBO, you know, they mm -hmm. made sure to stay at least somewhat historically accurate. Um, but yeah, it, they touched, and it's it felt very dirty. Like there was just a lot of, people were not, you could tell they weren't clean, except for maybe the main character, who's played by Timothy Oliphant. I wanted to make sure I got his name right, because um, I also liked him in Justified. I love Justified. Justified's really good. It's so good, which is another really, even though it happens in Kentucky, totally a Western. Totally, yeah, it does have that Western. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It's more modern day. It is. It's yeah. a modern day Western. Yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, I never even thought of it as a Western. But yeah, yeah now that you the say Stetson it. the Stetson and the gunfighting. You're and he, right. He's totally like the sheriff that rides into town. I like think the, that he's definitely, um, you know, been typecast, not in a bad way, but. You know, Timothy Oliphant is great in yes. both shows. In both shows. Um, mm -hmm. So so I think they just, uh, and, and all the sickness that was going on around yeah. that time, no, no, no hygiene, you yeah. know. Well, and they, they really a, were able to portray that. Right. You're out there on the edge of the world in terms of what, people in the East considered civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, right there, that's a problematic idea because where Deadwood's located, that, that land is taken from somebody else that absolutely had a thriving civilization oh, yes. there. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is, is a very problematic uh, social construct. But people living there were at the edge of, of amenities that, that had them prioritize mm -hmm. uh, things like hygiene in those Western-style um, towns. And so... Taking a bath, I mean, it's a hard. You got to find wood or coal to set the fire. You've got to find clean water. It's expensive. Got, yeah, it's expensive, probably. and it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And so, who's gonna? And then you got to wash the clothes. Yep. And then who's? And the world is full of dust because you're out there on the plains. Life yes. is just dirty. Uh, you mentioned Timothy Oliphant. Yes. Um, do you like his character? Yes, I think he was great. I mean, he plays the uh, the straight guy, like the straight man, the mm -hmm. guy who uh, people can relate to, who's a little bit kinder, um, you know, tries to do the right thing. Yeah, I like uh, his character. I, I think playing a, a good straight man is hard. Like, I, yeah. I, because the straight man's job is to make everybody else look better than them. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy to do, mm -hmm. uh, to be the person around whom. Because I think Deadwood, kind of like Batman, like it's an interesting character surrounded more, by more interesting characters. Yes. Because you've got Timothy Oliphant as, as your as your semi-sympathetic. Al Swaringen or yeah. whatever. <laughs> but then you've, you've got, I think when people think Deadwood, they instantly gravitate toward Ian McShane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who stole the show a lot of the time mm -hmm. because he's just so delightful, <laughs> evil. Yeah. Uh, th th what did you think of Michelle's character? Um, I, I think he's a perfect, uh, like, because I think Al Schwarzen was like intimidated by him, and you know that's the interesting part too, where they're always going head to head and butting yeah. heads and. Al, Schwar Al is kind of the guy who wants to run everything, but, you know, maybe isn't succeeding as well as he should be and mm -hmm. is trying to defeat the bad guy. And so he does really terrible things like, you know, murdering off innocent people and, in you know, trying to get as much money as he can and getting all the prostitutes, all the people to come to their prostitutes over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's effectively at that point, he's, he's, he's trafficking in people's hopes and dreams. Yes. Uh, and exploiting them. He's a professional. Exploiting them. And, and he's, he's. And he's, not in a nice way. And he's, he's extremely, I don't know how they accomplish this. Maybe you can articulate it. They take someone that is savage, who, whose whole lifestyle is built on using the people around them. Yes. And somehow make him charming in his brutality. So in addition to these two guys, your favorite character is... Alma. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, she also a great actress. She was in House of Cards. But um, her character, because it's, it's the perfect example of having come from a middle, up, upper middle class, I would say. I don't mm -hmm. actually... You know, I'm sure that's just how I want to explain it. But she, um, she goes into this unknown land. It's this up and coming town. I forget what it's called. Um, but she's, you know, upper class, well kept. She hasn't seen much of the world. And she's married to this guy who, who's taken her on this trip in her search of gold. Yeah. Uh, that's the start. You know, I'm not really spoiling anything. Um, but she finds herself all alone in that town, a woman, and completely vulnerable. And 
you know, not knowing how the world works, mm -hmm. relying on the people in that town to help her who are already really bad people. Yeah. Um, so it's very interesting to see her journey because she does kind of get into the darker side of things and um and things, things don't go super well yeah. Yeah, yeah things don't really go well for her um as she feels she's kind of stuck in that town and, she's and also she's addicted to can. drugs uh -huh. so there was that whole side to her but um it was very interesting to see how she handled it um having come from such a a, a closed off view of the world I'm glad and to be placed into that kind of a place i'm glad you said that about alma about the about the drug addiction because yeah. that's one of my favorite things about deadwood is that it reminds us maybe better than than most films that are in the western genre that people in that place and time were were us oh we, yeah we, we that gulf of cultural separation and the fact that we we don't live in in necessarily ramshackle wooden plains towns anymore and mm -hmm. wear cowboy hats <laughs> maybe makes us feel like we were almost a different species yeah like we're better than them but that was not that long ago <laughs> no it was in exactly the same place we live now mm -hmm. they were these were our great grandparents you yeah. know our great great grandparents and there was drug addiction and there were issues around what, what was going on with, with people's vocations. There was murder. There was corrupt business. Yeah. There was exploitation. There were the questions around. There was nothing the, governing these yeah. people. And so they were left up to their own devices. And if you're a bad person, you're going to do bad things. <laughs> and, <laughs> or you're, and if you're trying to be a good person, sometimes you find yourself. Having to still, do or still having to do the bad things, yes. And that's that world that we lived in. I, yeah. When I think of Deadwood, most of all, I, I think, and I go to Red Dead, I look at the preview for Red Dead 2. You know, mm. we see those clips. When we see the town, the yeah. muddy mountain town, mm -hmm. um, some of the paletting is different than Deadwood, but man, that sense of that all encompassing grime and grit. Yes. And, 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 it, it does remind me more of Deadwood than Red Dead Redemption 1. Yeah, I in, agree. In, I, in I many like ways, that. it's a uh, thing. Yeah, they're and trying to create something. In, yes, in, out in of a nothing. Place that, yeah, in a place they don't understand. They're yeah. trying, or they're trying to create their world. Mm -hmm. They're trying to take the East mm -hmm. and move it. I mean, obviously, again, people have been living there for thousands of years just fine. <laughs> what these folks are doing is coming back and trying to transport what they remember to another place. Yes. And then I think about that. Does that happen... In, right in now? our yeah, for in our oh. countries and our worlds, like do we do we bring these little parts of ourselves along? I think about when I moved to Japan and the little talismans of America I brought with me. Oh, these little touchstones that to, to but remind those are me. just moment like me, um, where is the word I'm looking for? Mementos. Mementos. Yeah, yes. I didn't try to like rebuild Japan in an American image. Yeah, I didn't. You weren't <laughs> changing anything that's you know already there. You were just bringing a piece of it. Yeah, but you wonder. I mean, would you ever, if you went moved into a place that to you seemed empty, oh, uh, yes. even even though obviously it was far from empty, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would you try to create what you'd done before? Or would you try to adapt to to the people that were there, or what would you do? I mean, it depends how vastly different the location is because if yeah. i go to a place like maybe tokyo then yeah i'd have to probably downsize quite a bit and yeah. um you know adopt some of their cultural uh you know just to be respectful of the culture there but yeah. um and yeah it depends where i'd be moving but uh like i feel like if i went to a place like i don't know romania or switzerland i'd probably just decorate the place like i do now home, and yeah. yeah i would have to adopt in other ways outside of my home but yeah which favorite moment you remember from Deadwood? Hmm. I, I think the moment when uh, Alma finds out that her husband has come or is being dragged out in this like piece of wood on wheels uh, brought into the town and she sees like this obviously a body but covered by a blanket and she's like oh that's that's my husband he's dead I'm all alone now you know and kind of her processing that and um and then the first few moments of her after she has gone out to see the body and confirm that it was him uh she goes back to her apartment and she's uh she calls some of the folks in the uh what's it called i guess the saloon mm -hmm. yeah and she calls them up to her place and she's like i don't know what to do like how can you guys help me and that's when you see like she is really vulnerable mm -hmm. and she does not know anything about the world and and what to do she's she's relying on people who don't necessarily have her best interests and that creates a lot of the drama that the series is founded on and the yes. fact that she grows and changes so much she as a character does. like as as she becomes don't want to spoil anything yeah. but yeah she does kind of take a not a turn for the better <laughs> no she she definitely <laughs> learns to survive in a place where she's 
being exploited. Yes. Uh, and that's pretty. And of course, that leads to the ultimate tragedy of Deadwood that didn't get an ending. Yep. And that is, for those of us that, that love it, that is the ultimate heartbreak. Um, three seasons. Three seasons and no end. I know. And that's the, so. Maybe they'll bring it back. May, I, <laughs> I don't think it's likely to happen. It's been too long. I don't know. Samurai Jack got an ending, so who knows? You know, yeah, they came back like. That's true. They came back like 15 years later. So and you never know. Jack, Deadwood so also know. has a pretty, uh, it's gained a cult, cult, I mean, a cult following that I was a part of because I watched it years after it released. Yeah. Oh, so. it's spectacular. And yeah. and it is, uh, it is a standout television Western. I recommend all of you that haven't checked it out do so, but do be warned. There is no satisfying ending because they just stopped the show and it never just like finish. that yeah and it really stinks because you're just sitting there with all this great setup <laughs> but it's still that never gets paid off i know uh, still amazing to watch um yeah but yes the, just for the performances alone alone the production yes value it's been, mm-hmm. anyway naomi thank you for coming on and thanks talking for having about me that uh folks we're going to be right back with luck of the draw stay tuned all right we're back for luck of the draw four suits four questions about random things that have nothing to do with anything in particular <laughs> one guest naomi kyle Pick yes. a card, any card. Okay. All right. Anyone you like. What suit does Naomi Cal draw? What do you got here? Is it hearts? Is it space? It's diamonds. Diamond. Diamonds. The diamonds question today is from Andrew. Okay. Andrew asks a simple yet provocative question. Interesting. Naomi, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? You have to choose. You're one fighting horse to the death. size duck. You're going to fight one duck. That is the a size, size of a of horse. A horse. Yeah. Now this, you understand, this is a fight. Like, this duck is out to kill yes. you. Yes. Um, yes. But I would, if, you know, I only kill one animal, I feel better. That, oh, okay. So it's oh, so you have no question you're, you're going to slay this duck. <laughs> well, I have to if he's going to try to kill me. No, I mean, I mean, are, if it's just a succeed? beat him up, then, yeah, I want to see if I can fight a freaking horse sized duck. Okay, I like that a lot. What are the... I'm not going to pick on someone smaller than me. Let's talk about the matchup here for a minute. I like okay. that. You're not going to pick on someone smaller and you only have to kill one thing. Yes. I like It's a very gentle heart. Because it's a hundred ducks, right? Yeah, it would be a hundred duck sized horses. And I cannot... Horses. So the only way... Horses. Yes, and so the only way I can beat them is if they like get knocked out or like I don't... I, I wouldn't like know what to do with that. Swarm you and trample you. Yeah, I think... Swarm that's... and trample me or, you know, the only way I can really get them... I feel like it would be constant. It would just be constant ducks coming after me. Tiny, tiny horse feces. Horses. But yeah. if you fight the giant duck, okay. First off, what are what are his weapons? How, what do you have to watch out for? A uh, duck's weapon would probably be a uh, water squirter, high powered water squirter. Oh, just a, <laughs> yeah. Like, just worry about being saturated in duck juice. Or like a, you know, like we're talking like fire hydrant powered pressure. Oh, okay. So he's getting knocked Very over. Very strong. Yeah. And then he webs you to death, like with his Maybe feet. Maybe like, webs scrim- me to death. Yeah. So how do you fight a giant? Like if you had to kill a giant duck, how would you do it? I don't want to kill a giant duck. I know, but if you I have had choice. to. You're trapped in a t- cavern. Your 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 beloved is tied to a post by an evil duck. Yes. Okay, you've got to you've got to defeat this. Life duck. or death. Um, I would. Ooh, I don't know. This yeah. is gory. I know. Uh, this is a gory question, uh, or provocative, as you said. Uh, I would maybe try to t- grab his beak and twist his head around. Oh, oh, are you gonna break his? Like, grab the beak and like yeah. from behind, like the duck crack. Like, if I could get on top and yeah. This is. so so grotesque because I love ducks. I know. Like, I love mallards so much. I mean, I could, if I had a weapon, maybe I could try a different way. Well, but it still, wouldn't be as, this would be less gory you in some ways. You the back and just breaking the duck's I head, feel like, like that would be the, the, hum, like the, the kind of humane thing to do. Execution style. Well, oh how else gosh. am I supposed to do it? I, I don't want to stab and then get all bloody and... And oh then maybe he won't die. <laughs> and if it's life or death and my, my loved one, Kyle, is trapped somewhere, I got to make it quick. This is so grotesque. This is awful. He I asked the it. question. I know. I it's don't pretty know. Good. Andrew, thank you for the question. <laughs> Pony Express, we're going to cut into that segment uh, here at the end because we're filming at E3 right now. And everybody's watching a press conference right now. And there's no way I'm going to get uh, question <laughs> questions at the moment. So uh, instead, we're going to go straight right here to... The Red Dead Radio Poker Tournament. Okay. Right. So do I, I can choose So you can some. throw up to four cards right. away and replace them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be really a good... Uh, don't see a lot going on there? Yeah, I don't see a Just lot. want one? Wait. Uh, <laughs> wait. It's all right. Two? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we never tell our guests how to play poker. The, wait, how many can I drop? You can take up to four. 
Oh, can I just do that? Yeah, okay. you can totally do that. All right, but you're stuck with what you have now. Yeah, okay. All right, so these are your replacements? So I have four now. You have five cards. No, I only have four. You only have four? Yeah. Wait, you threw an... Oh, you threw four cards away. Okay, I there did. you go. All yes. right, there you go. I didn't realize it. So now I reveal what I have? You reveal what you have. Oh, God. Naomi Kyle, not... you have... Nothing. <laughs> you have... Wow, you almost had a flush. Um, if you'd had one more diamond, you'd have a flush. Uh, but... Unfortunately, no flush, no straight. You're very close to a flush, but single ace. Would you a flush beat it? A flush would beat it. Yeah, Damn flush, it! But you didn't have ah, it. Yeah. I was just missing one card. Nah, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't throw it. You did the right thing. I did the I'm right looking, thing. I'm, yeah, you did. Because right I came thing. close. So it's threw away. All right. You totally made the right choice. <laughs> also, these Princess Bride playing cards are bodacious. Thank you. Naomi, you are here in the Grand City of Los Angeles yes. uh, doing all kinds of things. Yeah. I, I saw you battle botting recently. Oh, yeah, I did battle bots. <laughs> uh, uh, that's kind of uh, kind of cool. What, what, where can we find you again? We you talked a little about yes. your podcast earlier. What do you have to do? Uh, so, yeah, I work on my podcast. That's a bi-weekly thing at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, and I do vlogs and YouTube. So check me out on YouTube. It's just Naomi Kyle. And uh, you can find me on, uh, on Instagram, the Naomi Kyle. I post a lot there kind of my go-to um i'm trying to get better at twitter so if you want to follow me there it's naomi kyle and then facebook it's naomi kyle fans um a slash naomi kyle fans yeah thank you so much and that's it my... yay uh, thanks for having me uh, we actually just recorded an episode of your show we did uh so so I you can see I... that uh it's probably up at the point yeah, yeah yeah this is going up later probably so. up Excellent. Go check it out. Friends, thank you for watching. Listen, you can always mail us at mail at reddeadradio.com. That's mail at reddeadradio.com. Until next time, happy trails. Now we do a pickup and okay. we're done. So okay. the pickup is usually like, I'm like, this week on Red Dead Radio. Oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Do you want to say, uh, usually the guest just says like one thing. Sometimes it's silly, sometimes it's nice. Is there okay. something you want to say at the end? Um, oh, um. At the end of your intro? You tell you a bit. This week on Red Dead Radio, we do da 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 da. And then sometimes you guess like, and it can be a thing. Sometimes it's starting to get funny. Right, like a quote. Yeah, to a quote. Uh, like, Scarpino's like, you tell him I'm coming and hell's coming over here all the time. It's like, free horse, man.